today's student and this video lecture we will talking about one of the interesting topic that is mostly related to the physiology that is about the neurotransmitters now what the neurotransmitter is as we know that our nervous system that is mainly composed of billions of neuron but these neuron that are not directly connected with each other now this is special type of junction is present between these two neurons are these billions of neuron so at uh, this special type of the junction that exists between the two neuron that is called a synapse now look at see here the communication how the communication it is passed from one neuron and to the second neuron or how the signaling or nerve impulse it is transmitted from the one neuron and to the other neuron although there is a special type of the junction or spaces present between the two neuron the answer is that the communication that that occur between the two neuron that is occur with the help of the chemical messenger that is able to transmit the signaling or communication from one neuron and to the another neuron this chemical substance or chemical messenger that is able to transmit signaling through the synapse this special chemical messenger this is known as neurotransmitter neurotransmitter mainly responsible for the transmission of nerve impulse from one neuron and to the other neuron this is called as neurotransmitter now look it see here we have two type of the neuron so the neuron that is mainly present before the synapse now such type of the neuron that is called as presynaptic neuron while the neuron that is present after the synapse this is called as postsynaptic neuron now let us discuss some more about the neurotransmitter now after understanding the concept of the neurotransmitter we will discuss here the definition of the neurotransmitter that what the neurotransmitter is actually a neurotransmitter is a chemical substance that act as a mediator that act as a mediator for the transmission of impulse from one neuron to another neuron through a synapse now what is the mediator so here the neurotransmitter play the role of mediator so what the mediator is mediator is actually a molecule that is responsible for the transmission of signaling so and this way the neurotransmitter it is responsible for the transmission of signal and this way the signal it is in the form of nerve impulse so it is able to transmit the nerve impulse from one neuron to another neuron but this transmission occur right in the place of synapse so neurotransmitter mainly these are the mediator or transmitter for a transmitter that is mainly responsible for the transmission of nerve impulse but this transmission of nerve impulse it, it is occur right at the junction of the neuron that is called as synapse so this is actually the neurotransmitter now we will define the neurotransmitter in another way so these are actually the second definition of the neurotransmitters so the chemical messenger which conduct impulse in the region where the neuron cannot act as is, this is called as neurotransmitter so you can see here the neurotransmitter there that is able to carry the message so here the this neurotransmitter it will it will carry the message right at the place where the neuron cannot access so you can see here the two neuron that are not present right at the place of the synapse so here the neuron that is not reached but here the transmission is occur with the help of the chemical messenger and this chemical messenger it is known as neurotransmitter now we will discuss here important mcqs right related to the neurotransmitter as we know that the neurotransmitter these are actually the chemical messenger and the chemical messenger that that is found in two type of the systems so the chemical messenger that is mainly found in the nervous system now such type of the chemical messenger it is now called as neurotransmitters when chemical this chemical messenger. messenger it is found in the endocrine systems of our body now this such type of the it is now called Hormones. as so you should have to remember this point that is mainly related to the neurotransmitters now let us discuss the history of the neurotransmitters now the neurotransmitter actually the existence of the neurotransmitter was first discovered by Otto Levy in 1921s now he performed experiment and through this experiment he found that the neurotransmitter or the chemical messenger are present now what is the experiment as or what the experiment is actually 
he take two frog so this is frog a and this is frog b so you can see here the frog a it have this the heart of this frog a it is intact are connected with the vagus nerve vagus nerve now this frog a it have a vagus nerve that is connected with the hearts and this frog it is placed in a saline filled chamber this is the chamber in which the frog a it is kept while he the next frog that is frog b it it is degenerate uh, denervated what does it mean the denervated it means that the connection between the vagus nerves and heart it is it is lost i it means that only the vagus nerve it is not found not found here in case of the frog b and this frog it is placed in another saline filled chamber this is the this chamber now what happened so this actually when the vagus nerve it is it is stim electrically stimulated so what happened when this vagus nerve it is electrically stimulated so the heart rate of the frog a it is low down now these two chamber they are connected with each other in such a way that the fluid from the chamber this chamber it is transferred into this chamber now when the when the vagus nerve it is electrically stimulated the heart rate of the frog a it is slow down after the some time the heart rate of the frog b it is also slow down so from this observation Otto Lowy concluded or observed that the chemical substance that is present in this chamber it is transferred into this chamber and is able to slow down the heart rate of the frog B. Now this chemical substance that is transferred from one chamber into the another another chamber and slow down the heart rate of the frog B. He called this chemical substance that is Wegastoff. So Wegastoff is actually the chemical the the name that is used for the chemical substance that slow down the heart rate of the frog b so you can also say that this this is actually the uh, earlier name used for the neurotransmitter now this term later this chemical substance was considered as a neurotransmitter and this neurotransmitter that he called it is vega stuff it is actually the acetylcholine so this is actually the discovery or the history of the neurotransmitters now you can also say that the first neurotransmitter to be discovered that is actually the acetylcholine now the study of neurotransmitter it is called as neurochemistry now some important point, point that is mainly related to the neurotransmitter that is about the what is the largest neurotransmitter and what is the smallest neurotransmitter it is very important mainly for the general knowledge and also for the competitive exam so these large and small neurotransmitters they are decided on the basis of their molecular weights. So the smallest neurotransmitter that is the glycine. Glycine is considered as the smallest neuro uh, neurotransmitters. If we look to the molecular weight of the glycine, it is about 75 gram per mole. So it has the molecular weight of the glycine. Glycine is also considered as the smallest amino acid. Now the largest neurotransmitter that is neuropeptide Y. So it is considered as the largest neurotransmitter. If we look to the molecular weight of this neuropeptide Y, it have the molecular weight of that is 4270 gram per mole. It have the molecular weight of the neuropeptide Y. If we talk about the number of the neurotransmitter that is mainly present in our body, so there are more than 100 neurotransmitters are present in our nervous system. But these neurotransmitters, they are considerably added after an year uh, an year. So about more than 100 neurotransmitters, they are existed in our body or in our nervous system. Now we will discuss the criteria for the neurotransmitters. So for a chemical substance to be considered as a neurotransmitter, it must fulfill the following criteria of the in chemical substance. It will uh, fulfill these criteria. Now on the basis of these criteria, we will consider that the chemical substance, it is actually a neurotransmitter. Now what are these criteria? So first criteria that is, it must be found in the neurons. So the, in the chemical substance or the neurotransmitter, uh, it must be present in the 
neurons so it is the first criteria now let's like see the second criteria it must be produced by neuron so the chemical substance that will act as a neurotransmitter it must be produced by a neurons now the third criteria that is it must be released by neuron so you can see here the chemical substance it must be released by the uh, neurons so the first criteria that is power of presence and the neuron second it must be produced by a neuron the third criteria a criteria that it, it must be released by a neurons now the fourth criteria after release it must act on the target area and produce some biological effects so you can see here when the neurotransmitter it is released so on the fourth synaptic neuron it must have a receptor so this neuron it will act on this target area on receptor site and will cause some biological effect and the post synaptic neurons are membrane now the fourth one after the action it must be unactivated inactivated so when it is near the chemicals messengers are the chemical substance it is uh, it will perform its action so after the action it must be unactivated so these are the criteria of a substance it will fulfill these criteria or it will obey these criteria so the new chemical substance it will be considered as a neurotransmitters now let us discuss some term that is mainly related to the neurotransmitter but this term it is completely different from the neurotransmitter that is the neuromodulators so what the difference that is existed between the neurotransmitter and neuromodulators now look at see the first difference are the defin definition of the neuromodulators so the substance that modify and regulate the activities of the synaptic transmission so these are actually the substance that is mainly responsible when the synaptic transmission occur are the nerve impulse it is transferred to the synaptic so this is actually the synaptic transmission so these substance that is mainly responsible to regulate the synaptic transmission how these substance it is able to regulate and modify the synaptic transmission so our point number first it modify the strength of synaptic transmission second it may in uh, it influence the release or reuptake of the neurotransmitter third it alter the excitability of the neuron so by these three way it will regulate and modify the activity of the synaptic transmission so modulator mainly regulate the synaptic transmission but actually the neurotransmitter it will able to propagate the nerve impulse through synapse so it is neurotransmitter it help and the transmission of the nerve impulse through a synapse while it regulate this sign uh, this synaptic transmission the second point that is the neuromodulator it is fact and large synaptic vesicles so i write at the free synaptic neurons terminal these neuromodulators that are present in the form are these are fact and a large synaptic vesicle while the neurotransmitter it is fact and a small synaptic vesicle right in the presynaptic terminal ends now if we look to the structure or chemical composition of these two substances that are completely different chemically the neurotransmitter and the neuromodulators so chemically if we look to the neuromodulators so chemically the neuromodulators they are mainly made from the peptides if we look to the neurotransmitter so chemically neurotransmitter that are made from the amino acids amines are some other substances so these are the two term that is the neuromodulators and neurotransmitter and these are the main difference excess between these two terms now let us clear our concept more on the neurotransmitters so look at see here the main concept that we will clear here so you can see here this is actually the presynaptic neuron while this one is actually the first synaptic neuron now what happened exon terminal of this presynaptic neuron it have an vesicle that store the neurotransmitter now this vesicle it will release its neurotransmitter and to this junction this is called as synapse and this neurotransmitter it will carry the nerve impulse now for many years it was believed that a single neuron it is able to release only one neurotransmitter but now it is known that a single neuron it is able to transmit many of the neurotransmitters now this phenomena it is called as co-transmission so the release of many neurotransmitter from a single neuron terminal this phenomena it is called as co-transmissions 
now you can see here this is actually the main neurotransmitter or you can say the primary neurotransmitter so what are primary neurotransmitter primary neurotransmitter are actually the main chemical messenger that transmit the nerve impulse or the message from presynaptic neuron up to the postsynaptic neuron now you can see here along with this primary neurotransmitter another substance that is present with this primary neurotransmitter now this substance it will release along with the primary neurotransmitter now this substance it is called as cotransmitter substance because this substance it will release along with the primary neurotransmitters now look at see here the definition that the substance that, that are released in addition to the primary neurotransmitter in the nerve ending this is called as cotransmitters now you can see here the example of the core transmitter that is dopamine and serotonin so you can see here that this is dopamine it is actually the core transmitter of the serotonin serotonin is actually the primary neurotransmitter while dopamine it is actually the core transmitter of the serotonin now the look at see here the another example of the core transmitters so this substance p it is actually a core transmitter now this core transmitter it will release along with the acetylcholine so this is actually the concept of the core transmission and what are the core transmitters now we will see here how the mechanism of action of the neurotransmitter how the neurotransmitter it will able to transmit the nerve impulse from one neuron and to the another neurons now we will see here the mechanism of the action of the neurotransmitter how this neurotransmitter it will pass the depolarization of the other neuron or how this is able to communicate with two neurons now in the first step, so we will start here from the synthesis of the neurotransmitter so this is actually the structure of the neuron so this part of the neuron it is called as cell body while the extension of this cell body it is called as dendrites now alongside of plasmic extension arise from the cell body this is called as exon while this is the actually the exon terminal now this is the overall structure of the neuron now you can see here the cell body it is actually the machinery of the neuron so here the synthesis of many substance occur so neurotransmitter it is actually synthesized in the cell body now after the synthesis of the neurotransmitter and the cell body it is moved at through exon and come into the exon terminal ends when this neurotransmitter come into the exon terminal it is fact now this is structure it is called as vesicles now when the nerve impulse it is come into the exon terminals so the, it will able to release the vesicle it is able to release this neurotransmitter now the neurotransmitter it is released into the synaptic clefts so when this neurotransmitter it is come into the synaptic cleft so here the special type of the receptor that is present in the post synaptic membranes so these are the receptors now these receptor it is uh, the receptor that is found in the post synaptic membrane these are the g protein protein kinase and ligand ketin receptors so these are actually the receptor that is found in the post synaptic membranes now here the calcium channel it is often and this neurotransmitter it is bind with the receptor site found and the post synaptic membrane and this neurotransmitter it will cause depolarization of this membrane and will transmit the nerve impulse from this neuron and to the post synaptic neurons so by this way the nerve impulse it is transmitted from one neuron and to the other neuron now what happened to this neurotransmitter after its action so it may be engulfed by the astrocyte which is actually the main glial cells or it may be engulfed by specific type of or it may be digested or degraded by specific type of the enzyme so this is actually the fate of the neurotransmitter after its actions now how the rear of take of the neurotransmitter occur or how this neurotransmitter it is come back into the exon terminal so special type of carrier protein it is present in this membrane of the exon terminals so to this carrier protein the neurotransmitter it is reuptake into the exon terminal so this is overall the mechanism of action of the neurotransmitters now we will discuss the classification of the neurotransmitter 
so on two basis or you can say on two method we will classify the neurotransmitter the first one that is depend on the chemical nature the second one that is on the basis of the function so on the basis of the chemical nature there are three type of the neurotransmitter the first one that is amino acids the second one that is amines and the third one that is others while on the basis of the function we will classify the neurotransmitter into two categories the first one that is excitatory neurotransmitter and the second one that is inhibitory neurotransmitter so let we discuss about the chemic on the basis of the chemical natures so the first one that is amino acids so these neurotransmitter that are made from the amino acids so you can see here the definition of the amino acid neurotransmitters so neurotransmitter of this group are involved in first synaptic transmission and are excitatory and inhibitory in action so the amino acid neurotransmitter that are mainly involved in first synaptic transmission so they will transmit the nerve impulse so fast so these type of the neurotransmitter that come under the category of amino acids and it may show excitatory and inhibitory action in the first synaptic membrane so the example of amino acid neurotransmitter that is GABA mean GOMA amino butyric acid glycine glutamate and aspartate these are the example of amino acid transmitter neurotransmitters now the second category based on the chemical nature that is amines amines neurotransmitter so these are actually amines are the modified amino acid that are actually formed from the amino acids now what the definition of amine neurotransmitter is so these are actually the neurotransmitters come in this category that are mainly involved and in slow synaptic transmission so it, it will transmit the electrical signal slowly and it will show inhibitory and excitatory action in the four synaptic membrane so such category of the neurotransmitter that are amine neurotransmitters so we have the example that is dopamine and histamines, adrenaline, non-adrenaline that come in the categories of amines neurotransmitters. Now the last category of the chemical nature that is others. So what are the others? So the neurotransmitter that does not fit into this category amino acid base and amines base. So they are placed under these categories. So here the example that is nitric acids and acetylcholine they are come in the category of others now on the basis of the function the neurotransmitter they are classified into two category the first one that is excitatory neurotransmitter while the second one that is inhibitory neurotransmitters now what the excitatory neurotransmitter is so in excitatory neurotransmitter is actually the chemical substance which is responsible for the conduction of the impulse from free synaptic neuron to the first synaptic neuron so such kind of the neurotransmitter that are known as excitatory because it is able to transmit the nerve impulse from the free synaptic neuron and to the sy uh, first synaptic neuron through the synapse so these kind of the neurotransmitter that are excitatory it will carry the message from free synaptic neuron to the first synaptic neuron example of the excitatory neurotransmitter that is acetylcholine and non-adrenaline these are the example of the excitatory neurotransmitters now the second category that is inhibitory neurotransmitters as the name indicate that it will inhibit or it does not transmit the nerve impulse from the pre synaptic neuron to the first synaptic ne first synaptic neurons so these are actually the inhibitory neurotransmitters chemical substance which inhibit the conduction of the impulse from pre-synaptic neuron to the first synaptic neuron these are inhibitory neurotransmitters example that is comma amino butyric acid and dopamine these are the well-known example of the inhibitory neurotransmitters so this is all about the neurotransmitters thank you so much mm -hmm.